huge thank you to Reclamet here. I rung them straight up and spoke to Gary there and said, got any Vogue too heavy for my truck? Can you get it from Copart? He went straight round there, collected it, and literally within the hour, it was delivered back to the yard. There's another car being loaded on here that they're taking away, but we'll get to that in a later video. Welcome back to the channel and a new video. Bit of a different way of starting it, just with the car being delivered. So Range Rover Evoque, a very, very weird, well, just, everything's got a story, hasn't it? And this story, I can't quite work out what has gone on here. So I'm going to spin the camera around. Give me your thoughts and your ideas in the comments. What has actually gone on here? I'll tell you one of my theories and we'll see if that actually pans out and you all agree with me. So Range Rover Evoque in white. Ignore the number plate. It does not come with this car but obviously it was previously on here. So I was bidding on a black 19 reg, 18 reg rather, Range Rover Evoque Dynamic on Copart. It ended up making way too much money. We'd won it the week before on approval. They wouldn't let us have it. And this one popped up. Now I did do all of my checks on the other one and I thought that I did them on this as well, i.e. car vertical, rung up Copart, made sure it weren't a private entry, it was an insurance car, but I don't think I did because I'm going to tell you now, I would not have bid on this car if I see that that air filter was missing because it just says flood damage, doesn't it, straight away. But I didn't notice that, I didn't notice, I did bid on this car and I won it but it does say run and drive. This cover, of course, is missing as well. It looks like there's possibly something else missing in there, but let's have a quick walk around the car and I'll show you the damage. So it's category N and you can see they've marked the tire there. It's obviously got a bulge in it or a slice out of it, but it's been marked. It's just a pure tech. All looks straight, all looks good. Then you get round here to the damage. I mean, come on, what damage? It's got a scuff on the bumper here and here, and we all know that's from a tyre, and that will wipe straight off with a bit of thinners. Your little plastic trim's got caught there. You can see where it's got caught. And it's just ripped it off. It's just, you could actually put that back on there, put the parking sensor back in and glue that on, couldn't you? And then going round into the boot, Chris opened the boot up because we chucked a jump pack on it. And you'll be pleased to know it does start because I drove it off the back of the truck. And surprise, surprise, look what's in the boot. What's that all about? Why is the airbox in the boot of this car? I don't get it. But I'm just going to quickly show you my theory of what I think has gone on with this car. So my little bit of a theory on this one, when I run a car vertical, you can see odometer looks good, financial and legal looks good, and damage is clearly highlighted there in amber. It does say it is a category N, but here's the bit that really interested me. So this is the bit that really made this car appealing. Last known mileage, 30,328 miles. Onto timeline there, you've got your registration date, the ownership change on there, on the 9th, 2013. So I'm going to say this car was a pre-reg by the dealer. So it was registered before somebody bought it, and then it was put in somebody's name. So if you click on show more there, it had a license plate change from the original number to the number that is currently on the car, but now has been removed. And when you go a little bit further down, these are just inspections and MOTs, down here, it's very, very interesting. Ownership change, the 1st, 2024. Then on the 2nd, 2024, it had the plate removed. So the plate was removed after the vehicle was sold. Did somebody buy this car and chain just to get that private number plate off of it and then put it through Copart for sale? I need to give them a call and see if this car was a private entry. I want to thank Car Vertical for the continued support on the channel. To benefit from a nice little discount off your check, click on the code up on screen now and use that in any browser, or hit the link in the description, or it will automatically apply your discount. Right, I've chucked the airbox back on it, chucked the jump pack on it. It's running. 
it's running absolutely fine. It sounds lovely. I've checked the coolant, you can see there, that's perfect. I've checked the oil as well, and it's up to the maximum. So we've got no issues there. I panicked and thought, oh, is the head gasket gone? Has it been flooded? You just don't know. But getting in here, let's shut that door. Probably going to keep going off because the bonnet's open. But engine management lights on, but that's going to be on, isn't it? Because the airbox has been unplugged. But it's revving up. There's, it sounds absolutely fine. I think let's get it in a workshop, get it up on the ramp, and have a look because I've noticed in the boot also the engine under tray is in there as well let's get it into the workshop there's something wrong with that front wheel as well chris said it was moving around yesterday when i was rolling it off the back of the lorry so let's get it up on a ramp take a look have i bought a lemon or is it really going to be a peach or do i quickly ring copart and see if this was a private entry i've got to confirm it haven't I? i'm going to do that let's take it in the workshop so straight into the workshop up on the ramp and i think we'll clean out not clean out the car we're here searching for the locking wheel nut it wasn't in the glove box or anything like that so i had to take all the boot carpet out take the spare wheel out and managed to find it rolling around in there so off with that front wheel where the damage is now i know when i show you this a load of you are going to say you got tucked and it's been bodged but I'm not so sure. I've just got off the phone to Copart. This car was not a private entry. It is an insurance car. And the only theory, well, I'm gonna show you first the damage. So I've managed to find the parking sensor, which is great, because that's gonna clip back in now. But check this out. Right. There is no CV boot on there. And you can see that some bearings are missing. So this front wheel has been knocked back, confirmed why well, you can see the wheels hit there. And it has snapped the lower arm, pulled the drive shaft out, chewed it up. That has temporarily been put back in there. Why is there an exhaust clamp with a hole drilled through the lower arm here and drilled through the lower arm here and has joined that lower arm back together? Now you would say that this car has definitely been bodged up to put through the auction, but it couldn't have, it couldn't, that can't be the case. It is an insurance car. Insurance don't do things like that. And the only theory I can think of is this was the first time this car went through the auction. It was its first appearance at the auction. You know, sometimes you get cars, they go through three, four, five, six times. This was the first time this went through. So it's not been at Copart long. I think where this car went for an assessment, the garage actually got fed up with trying to move this car around and they've just got it up in the air. They've shoved that, they've cut the boot off, shoved the drive shaft in and they've done that, just got that out their scrap bin and done that just so that this car is on its wheels and manoeuvrable. The good news is, I've ordered a lower arm. It's gonna be here shortly, but we need a drive shaft. I've just looked online. Uh, I've just rung up for a drive shaft. One place was 270. The other place was about 180. But I have just ordered a drive shaft from JNR Drive Shafts. I think someone recommended it to us in the comments, and it's gonna be here tomorrow. So. I can't really do no more to this until those parts arrive, but I am just going to show you what I'm going to do with this. Again, just based on my theory that this wasn't put through as a private entry, because if it, if it was, why wouldn't I have glued that on, got some standard thinners, and went like that, and made this car look a lot better because that is all it just took. And I knew that was gonna come off just by looking at it. Now anyone could have done that, 
with a bit of thinners, a bit of petrol, a bit of anything really, and pop that all back in there and glue that on and you wouldn't have known, would you? Anyway, I'll be back in the morning. And up in the air and straight on with that lower arm. So it is just nuts and bolts. There's two bolts at the back, one at the front, and then you've got the one on the lower pan there to remove on the hub. So that did make me laugh a little bit there, getting that lower arm out. And you can see that repair, actually, it's all gone like that. But where it's had the weight on it of the car, I mean, it's served its purpose, hasn't it? It's kept the car on its wheels. But I've got the replacement there, and you can see the only difference is, is this thing here for the height sensor, height level sensor, it is just a little 10 mil there. You undo it, and it pushes on and then you screw it into this one here. And then on the new lower arm, you can see there's nothing on the back there, but on this one, there is actually a weight. It actually says on there, 2013. Actually, that's just the year. But you can see that is just a little weight. And again, that's a 10 mil, and I can just swap that over. So they are the same. I also reckon it was a reasonably low impact speed because of that drop link it's really not bent that bad it's got a little kink in it there and you can see it up against the new replacement so and the reason i think it's it's had a low speed impact let me just check that that's capturing that there now there's no denying it that wheel's gone back and it has tapped on there hasn't it because it's left that dirty mark i need to take this off anyway to, an old, uh, to put a wheel arch on but i will have a little look behind there but I can, I'm, I'd bet anything that there's no damage behind there whatsoever. I don't think it's hit it hard enough. And that's what makes me think because of that drop link as well. It's just a low speed, like it scraped that bumper. It's hit that wheel and just snapped it off of that lower arm. And I think that that is it. I'm going to move on and get this lower arm fitted and the drop link just in case we need to move this car before the drive shaft comes in. But it is literally one nut left for the drive shaft swap that out and I think that is all the parts it's going to need so that it drives properly. Let's get on with it. Moving on with getting that all fitted back up there, getting the new lower arm in position. Of course, I'm not going to get it all in there 100% because I've got to put that drive shaft in there in the morning, but getting the lower arm on there, two at the back, one at the front and one on the hub. Right, so until that drive shaft gets here, there's not actually anything I can do apart from push that back on. Quite straightforward. It just pops on like that. That's that back on, that's that level sensor. Lower arms all back in, all nipped up, all bolted up. Obviously, I haven't put it in the bottom of the hub. I've left that out, left the cover on there because it's right up against that. And I've got those two 13s in there to undo because we're going to change the whole shaft. It's obviously two piece, but there's going to be damage inside this. Well, I say there's going to be damage. It looks like two of those bearings are absolutely fine. But this one has obviously lost its end cap. And although you could probably buy a bit for that, put a CV gator on there, for the price it was for a new one, it's probably not worth the risk. So yeah, just those two thirteens to undo in there. I'm not going to undo those at the moment because as soon as you pull that shaft out, it's going to start losing its oil. So what I want to do is pull it out and push the new one straight in there at the same time. In the meantime, I am going to do up that air box, put the bolt back in it, plug it in just while we're waiting for that shaft and see what codes it's got. Give the battery a good charge and of course, well, just, just continue on with it. I've already cleaned out all the back of it, you would have seen, and I've got the boot carpet there, that is the engine under tray, parcel shelf, a few little jobs to do on it. Let's carry on and get them done. And moving on, jump pack on there, and a quick scan with a diagnostic machine. It has got the engine light on, and you can see straight away, there is a lot of codes coming up on here. Fastest bit of time lapse there in the world. It is, I'm going to say, and I know a lot of you are going to say the same, that a lot of these codes are going to be battery related. Obviously, when it arrived, I jumped in it and the gear sticks down. Obviously, these pop up, don't they? And I needed to get it into neutral. 
but Chris put a little booster on it because it had literally nothing. Chris put a little booster on it and it actually fired straight up. So I've, I've just run it there. Engine control module, 19 codes. I mean, it can't have 19 codes, can it? ABS anti-lock braking system, free. Now, I would expect that to have a fault because it's had a slap in that wheel. And then supplementary inflatable restraint system, two, SRS. So that is going to be an issue. Last communication with engine control. Ah, battery voltage, that is. So, could be simple. Instrument cluster control module. Uh, vehicle identification number. I'm reading these. And I've got my head wedged in the, the ramp here because I've got the camera as close as I can to it. Low communication with engine control. Body control module. Column lock. Steering wheel. Do you know what? Let's not go through any more. Let's do a clear DTCs like we normally do. And then, obviously, once we start the car and drive it, I would expect a lot of them faults to go out. But I am hoping that that one um, engine fault, the engine management light, I am hoping that that was actually, because the airbox was unplugged and the airflow sensor was unplugged, I've plugged it all back in. It does run lovely with that still plugged in, so there's not an issue there. Has any of them come straight back? Look, not one of those codes has come back, uh, like stayed as an issue. So I guess it's going to be, let's start it up and see if the code comes back on. I'm not going to be able to get in that side. I'm going to have to get in the passenger side. For those of you that don't know what I meant about pop-up gear knob, obviously once you start the engine that rises. I found this in the door panel that I thought it was a um, CS gas, but it's not. It says stopper red self-defense marker spray. So I've read it and it says it may stain clothes and it's basically a red dye you spray on someone, but a bit more worrying than that. Expiry date 2011. So we can throw that in the skip. Anyway, all the faults are out. Foot on the brake, start buttons hidden behind a diagnostic machine. Foot on the brake and start. Right, engine light's gone out. Airbag light's gone out. Bonnet's open, that's okay. Service required, yep, for sure. Press OK, put it open, OK. No fault codes. I'm not, I'm not going to call it and say that's it, all sorted, because we're going to need to run it and drive it with this and then plug the diagnostic in and check it again. But let's get that drive shaft fitted and get it on the road. This is one of them moments where I'm hoping and praying that I'm definitely going to be wrong but there's our new drive shaft let's just make sure you can see that I'm trying to get the shaft and the car in there so you can see it and this this part of the drive shaft is identical it is exactly the same I can see it's the same length let's call that the half shaft because half of it's missing I can see that they are identical but I'm now worried whether this is for a two-wheel drive car because this is definitely a four-wheel drive and our drive shaft actually stops let's put my finger on it there so from there to there our drive shaft is only actually that long and you can see that is miles too long unless this part of the drive shaft goes right through the transfer case and i've never fitted one so i genuinely don't know if that is the case but it looks it is a possibility this is fine because our one has got this on it and that's what I can see, just stopped there on the edge of the gearbox. So I guess I'm just gonna, I've undone the bolts, I'm gonna tap it out. If you see me fitting this drive shaft on time lapse, we've got the right one. If we haven't, it's wrong. But that end of it is definitely right. Let's, I guess let's just try it and keep our fingers crossed because we don't wanna be waiting for another one. Let's do it. Moving on to that drive shaft. We'll get the drive shaft in there. Nice and straightforward, literally them two thirtings, the shaft pulls out, 
push it back in, do the things up, and then you've got your one nut right. Of course, it was the correct drive shaft. It's an easy mistake to make, you can see. Where that silver ring is around the drive shaft there, it looks like that butts up to the gearbox, but it actually butts up to the transfer box and then the shaft goes all the way through. So new lower arm, new drive shaft, new drop link. I've straightened up the steering and you can see there, that wheel looks perfectly straight. And then coming round this side, that looks perfectly straight as well. So it's a thumbs up. I think mechanically we're there with it. It is all back together. What I am gonna do, I now I have ordered one of these wheel arches. You can see how out of shape that is. The clips are all broken. There's sort of one there we'll get away with and there's one left in the end of it there that we'll get away with. I need to find a couple of clips for this, glue this on, try and straighten this up a little bit just so that we can get this car back on the road and finish to a degree. I've ordered one of them brand new from eBay. I've also ordered that battery cover that goes on the scuttle panel. I'll show you shortly. They're notorious for going missing. It like makes up part of the scuttle panel, goes over the battery cover, and they've got little black clips that fly off as well. So I've ordered the cover, the arch, and the clips, but we don't, they're gonna be a couple of days we want to crack on and get everything else done to this. So I'm going to put a bit of heat through that with a heat gun, find some clips for it, get it clipped on, get the wheel on, and see what this one drives like. Just a bit of heat there into that wheel arch, straighten that up, glue a couple of the tabs on with a bit of super glue, and then fit it on the car with a parking sensor in it. And I think we're ready, tray plates on, yellow writing off the window and we're ready to actually take this one out for a drive we'll head straight over and we'll think we'll get the alignment done on it and the wheel balancing and check all the tires i think we're ready for the maiden voyage i need to go and get some number plates for it i need to get the tracking and balancing done i need to get it cleaned and i think that's it it is pretty filthy and some of that writing, I don't know if you see it on my time lapse there, it's actually on the inside of the window. But pretty grubby inside. I've pulled the tax disc holder out, two permits that was in there. There's another one up there, they just don't need to be in here anymore, do they? And it is, look at the sun visor and stuff, it is quite grubby. But if that's all that was wrong with that car, I do get that. I do get that they would have wrote it off for that because they would have priced up. Genuine drive shaft, lower arm, new wheel, new tyre, new shock, new hub. They would have literally priced up the lot. Unbelievable, really. The only wheel that had an impact was the driver's side front. And there's nothing wrong with them. Tom, can you click that onto the rears again for us? That's quite far out, that, isn't it? So just that rear right wheel. Anyway, I'm sure we'll get them all nice and green for us. And then it will drive in a nice straight line. So ready for a nice clean. We're getting near the end of the series, aren't we? Once we're at Key Street and Car Wash, getting the car cleaned. I made light work of it, done all in the shuts, and in a minute you'll see they made quite a nice job of it. So Sheppy for the tracking and balancing, and Rich noticed that one of the tyres was actually bald on the edge, and the other one's got some cracking. They didn't have them in stock, so he's booked them over at Sitting Ball. I've come over here, they're fitting two new tyres on it, and I think we are there. So last time in the workshop, back up on the ramp, and I'm leaving Chris to it here, and he's gonna do oil, oil filter, air filter, and of course, that pollen filter. So you've just got one sump nut underneath you need to undo to drain the oil. There was no under tray on this, you can see it at the back of the workshop there in between the cars. We'll put that on once the new filter's on, and the sump plug is back in. Right, into the office. Well, that was a quick series, wasn't it? Very, very And you quick missed it all. Around. Most of it. You only got to service it. Yeah. So it'll all make sense right at the end of the video, but I actually come in over the weekend and cracked on yeah. and got that and one done. I was done. at the Kent show. Chris Kent was at the Kent show. show. Getting wet. You do the numbers, mate. Do the numbers. Right, we have got a purchase price of 3,850. Then we've got fees. That does sound like a lot of money for that car, but don't forget, 30,000 miles. That's right. Lovely. That's right. Um, always a gamble. Yeah, yeah. But 
Um, yeah, fees including VAT, £591.60. Transport, £75. Drop link, quite reasonable, £19.10. Lower arm, £120. They're getting on there, aren't they? Yeah. Drive shaft, £96.39. I think that's good for those parts. Yeah, that drive shaft's like that yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not worth with second hand, is no, it? No, no, not at all. Uh, battery cover, £30. Wheel arch, tri tw wheel arch trim, £28.99. That was new from eBay. Mm. And the clips to fit it, is that the clips to fit them? No, no the that's clips, for the battery tray. Clips and, for the battery yeah. tray, £4.91. Two tyres you've had fitted, £150. Service kit, £83.51. That was oil, oil filter, air filter, pollen filter. Yeah. Um, number plates, £20. Um, valet, £27. Four wheel alignment and the balance on the two wheels that haven't had new tyres, £50. And that is everything we've spent on that. Yep, just before you do the total, I want to cover the engine management light. Yeah. Chris jumped in with me yesterday and we drove on the 11 mile piece of motorway yep. from here to Faversham to do a regeneration on that. And Chris had to have the computer while I was driving. We had to get the soot content down mm. to below six. Six grams. Six yeah. grams, which we did. Yep. And then we drove it and done a regeneration on it. It was all fine. We stopped at my house, started it up and it come up again restricted performance and it come up that it was that little sensor wasn't yeah, it yeah. so we actually went around and bought one of them it was 33 pound and when we got back here i actually went to fit it we noticed that one of the hoses was split on the one we got so we chopped a little bit off the hose moved it along and now it's absolutely fine we took the sensor back and got a refund yeah yeah so what's your total right so the total on that car is five thousand one hundred and forty six pounds fifty pence fixed now we value that car at around the 10 grand mark, don't we? I think so, yeah. And that would give us a pre tax profit of um, yeah, £4,853.50. But, but, let's go outside. So, some of you may remember this. This is one that we previously repaired. We did. And it was it up the back. It is a beautiful car. We bought it off of a, a company and I had it from new. Now, as soon as it was done, we put Claire in that yep. for, for a little while. And that was purely until an Evoke come up, That's worth not, the money, a nice little car. Now that has come up, we have confiscated that back from Claire. <laughs> yeah. And when we done the numbers on this, Chris, walk around the back of it where it was previously damaged. When we done the numbers on this, we was going to ask 18,000 quid for it. Yeah. And it was cheap at the time. Yeah. But she's done a couple of thousand miles she in has, it. Yeah. We're going to drop it a couple of thousand pound. Yeah. We're now going to ask 16,000 pound for that car. And it did, you, we put a genuine Mercedes back panel in this, yep. a backlight from Eddie, and we bought a boot lid in colour. Shall we try and put a link in the video for that video? For that original video, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, it's full up with Claire's stuff still. <laughs> she doesn't even know I've taken it. No. So, yeah, this is going to be available. Of course, as usual, we're going to let the video play for a couple of days just so that everyone who was interested yeah. in that or is, That's is going to get to see it up for sale. So... That will be on Instagram in the next couple of days if you're interested. Of course, you can inbox us, sales, S-I-U-K, at gmail.com. The links for all our social medias are down below. Like, subscribe and share, and we'll see you very, very soon in the next one.